If something looks too good to be true, it probably is. You see Hashgacha and you see that the the certificate is expired. We're in 2024, right? If it says 2021, you know you have a problem. <laughs> if, if, if it's a month, a few days. You, know, you know, if it's a month, a week, a month, even even a little more, you know, many, many places, you know, we update their two uh, twice a year. So June 30th is a big time when, when a number of the two, so you, know, you come to July 4th and, and they, didn't, they didn't get, you know, so you know, the person who's doing the letters, but was away for July 4th weekend and d didn't get it. Also, if, if, you know, on July 1st, if we, we're, we're not going to start putting out emails, this place is no longer on the Rosh Hashanah. That's not, you know, we're here to serve this call, you so right. not, 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 so not, not, to, not to start, you know, when something happens or something goes on, you have to be so careful. One word that you say could destroy a person's parnasa forever. And welcome to Torah Talks Chazak's Tuesday Night Programs with special guests we have with us, Rabbi Dov Schreier, Baruch Haba. Welcome. Thank you. Ah, what an honor to have the rabbi. Keeping kosher year-round, that's the topic we're going to be discussing. But before we do that, if we get a little bit back on about the rabbi and the great work you're involved with. So I, I was born in Brooklyn. My father was a my father was a rabbi. My father was a rabbi for 60 plus years uh, in Brooklyn for, for 50, 53 years. Wow. Um, growing up in a rabbi's house, I always thought I was going to be a rabbi, and uh, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't like the uh, uh, political part of the uh, of the uh, of the life that I saw the, growing up. And as I was going through smicha, um, I had become the uh, gabai of the hashkama in my father's shul, and I started giving a dvar Torah at the end of davening. And when I was in my last year of smicha, I was uh, the rabbinic intern in the shul, and I gave a parsha year after davening on Shabbos morning. At the Hashkama Minion, and and there were a few 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 people used to come over to me with comments after after my Dvar Torah. Uh, I guess my favorite uh, story that I tell is uh, Parshas Achrimos. The first the first Rashi in Parshas Achrimos tells a story of uh, of why Rashi is asking why does the Torah repeat? You know they they died in Parshas Shemini. Why do I need a, a, a repeat that they died again? Okay. So Rashi says is gives a mushal to uh, to a doctor who tells someone not to eat something. Because he's because he, it's not healthy, versus a doctor who tells someone not to eat something because he's going to die like so and so like so and so died. And Rashi says this one got him in, got his attention a lot more than the, the original uh, diagnosis of the doctor. And you know I told the story and after after the after the kiddush uh, person comes over me he says my sister how I had a person a doctor he diagnosed someone going in with colon cancer that week uh, a few months before. And this week they came back for a follow-up uh, appointment. He told them that they're going to need to have surgery. It's dangerous. Anyway, the person comes back for their appointment and says, I have, um, I decided I'm going to try alternate medicine. Uh, this, uh, that. You know. So he turns to him and he says, uh, you know this uh, baseball player, Daryl Strawberry? Right? You know, he had colon cancer at the time, forgetting about all the other things he might have had. But he had colon cancer. If he didn't have surgery, he, he would have died. He said, if you don't have surgery, you're going to die. So the guy scheduled surgery for the next week. He said, this was, you know, the Torah coming alive in, you know, just, just with one little Rashi. And uh, all right, so that, 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 that got me you know, involved. And, in you know, I also, my father had been uh, uh, part of the rabbinic board of the OU, you know, th through the Rabbinical Council of America for many years. So he, he was always uh, heavily involved in the, in, in the Kashras. So it was something that interested me. Um, when I was finishing Smicha, I was looking for a rabbi position. Um, the, just as I was getting married, um, the OU started a seminar in Kashrus called the Ask OU, Advanced Seminars in Kashrus. Uh, Yosef Grossman, the Chetzal of Bracha, was Who the, I knew was the, yeah, very well, I, and I, we worked together with quite I, a few events. So I, I was in the first first class, and after the pro after the summer, I uh, got involved in a certain Kashrus project where I was in speaking to a couple people in the OU a few times a week. And when the when the project ended, I asked, "Was there anything else? Was anything available for the summer or, or, or in the in the office?" Because I hadn't uh, found a, a rabbi job, and I started working uh, in, in the OU for that summer, and I haven't left since. Wow. I've been there for about uh, next week will be twenty seven years. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in the OU, and I started working with the rabbi who takes care of the restaurants uh, and caterers. I. Um, after a couple of years, he moved on to uh, to a different location, and I took over the catering, 
they hired someone else to do the restaurants. After a couple of years, he left, and now I, I take care of the you know food services, restaurants, and, restaurants and, and catering, catering of the OU. OU. So I, that's in, pretty in, impressive. In, in between, I was also a rabbi in Jackson Heights in Queens for a couple of years, and then mm. in, in North Belmore for twelve years. When my oldest oldest son uh, was starting high school, the back and forth from North Belmore, even though we got busing to the five towns. It was a uh, night seder, two nights a week yeah. was a little difficult. So, <laughs> and I had a son in eighth grade also. So it was a, you know, a five year project. So we decided to, uh, to move on and move to the five towns. At the time, my father, Zuchon of Rocha, moved in with us for about four and a half years. And then he moved to one of my brothers. And we just finished the, the Avelos for him. We're actually, my family's actually dedicating a Sefer Torah this Sunday oh, in, wow. in my parents' memory. And, uh, but the, 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 the Shamash having the Leah, yeah. there should be a man at yeah, sharing yeah, all of Chalish. So, 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 that, so that's, uh, you know, but uh, you know, I've been in the Rabbonus and in cloud work for uh, for many years. And it runs in the family. A shout out to your nephew who yeah. introduces Rabbi Ashi, a dear friend of Chazak. And uh, so, Rabbi, summer is coming up. And uh, what you want to be aware of when it comes to uh, kashu? Does anything pop up? Uh, can... So, so when when we're when we're at home, we have our we have our uh, home base. We know what's we know what's going on. We hopefully trust the local local rabbanim in our community to take care of what's going on. But then we start going out to um, family trips or we go on vacations, vacations etc. Right. So, so then we we start getting you know whether it's your Slurpees, right? Uh, what could be wrong with a Slurpee? So you have flavors. But uh, Baruch Hashem, through the years, uh, many organizations, including the OU, have uh, have a list online. Uh, of the uh, of, of slurpees that that the syrups that are kosher, and if the syrups kosher, the ice is not going to be an issue. The, you know, the freezing of the slurpees should not be an issue. So, so we have a lot of flavors that uh, that people can get, and and it's fine. But uh, there are always those those few flavors that are that are either not kosher or for someone who's careful with halav Israel, some of them are actually dairy. Right, that people have to be careful with uh, with, with the slurpees. Um, ice cream, right? As it's uh, you ice know, this this week trucks, is, this yeah. week yeah, this week has started getting very hot. You know, yeah. we're uh, <laughs> everyone's running for ice cream. We we have to be careful. You know, we know packaged ice cream. You know, the OU gives hashkacha to packages. M- there are ver- very few ice cream stores that the OU gives hashkacha to. So if you come to an ice cream store and you see an OU OU certificate, you probably should check on the OU website ouposher.org to see if that store is actually certified. Or if you see a letter the there, the DAF could purposely don't do ice cream stores. Well, we, we don't do ice cream stores because it's uh, you know most of the ice cream stores are going to be open on Shabbat, and the OU is not going mm. to give a give a hashgacha to a retail establishment open on Shabbat, and that's the biggest, busiest time for a place to be open. If it's not in a in a uh, very significant Jewish community, they're not going to realize or or want to uh, accommodate by right. closing early Friday, staying closed on Saturday, uh, the, whether it's during the summer or any other time of the year when they're open. So, so you have to be careful. That, so they might put up a, a certificate from the OU where the packaged ice cream they're selling is, is OU. OU, but you're not going to necessarily know if they're switching you. <laughs> right, because it's not a franchise, and it's not they can put up the letter and say, you know, it's Ruvain's ice cream, and they're putting Shimon's, you know, Shimon's ice cream today. Or I don't want to use any names because <laughs> I don't want to disparage any uh, any uh, any company specifically. But you, you have to be careful. So so you know, when you're at home, you're not going to go to one of such a place. But what 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 am I doing now if I'm in Middle America, and I see, and I see that I had that they have the ice cream, and I know that this ice cream ha- has Ashkach, and they show me that the that the tub of ice cream has has the hashkacha on it. Can, can I get it? That that that's that's the question. So you know you want to make sure that the scoop is clean, everything's cold. Whether you can do that, that that's something that you can that you can already discuss with your rabbanim. Whether it's okay, whether it's not. But but you know the the this notion that uh, oh they're selling this ice cream and it's okay, and everything's okay. What about the toppings? Mm. What about if they're if they're selling uh, fresh fruits? Uh, as toppings, right? Some of the some of the berries that might be issues for for, for infestation, right? So you have to be careful that even even if you're going to be okay in the ice cream store to get the plain ice cream, right? And maybe they might have one or two toppings that you know you, you see it's written Oreo on it, so you know that it's an Oreo cookie or an M and M that you know it's an M and M if you're not Machbin a Chalvi Israel. Right, but you know some of them are going to have marshmallow. Marshmallow is always a uh, something to be very careful with because there's going to be gelatin in it, which can be a kashrut concern. Mm, right. And 
and and any other toppings, or there's going to be a hot fudge, right? If something's, if anything's going to be hot, you know, that's uh, anything that involves heat, right? Already uh, brings brings in a challenge. So one has to be careful. Somehow people still drink coffee even if they're during the summer. Maybe it's iced coffee, but you have to be careful. Iced coffee is not just plain coffee and 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 uh, and uh, water, right? Regular coffee is your brew water. Shalom al Yisrael, you're finished. Many of the iced coffees add flavorings, and it, right. because because when it's cold, you can't get the same uh, the same tom that you know. Although they have these cold brews today, <laughs> uh, that, that 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 you see in the in your refrigerated cases and all. But but many of these cold brews are cooked first. You know, they they think mm. oh, it's just coffee and water. These cold brews are cooked before they're. Uh, Right, so you can't just just make it make a blanket assumption that that everything's okay. Then you're going to come to cotton candy mm-hmm. and other other types of popcorns. What could be with popcorn? Uh, I don't know if anyone's allowed to go to movies anymore. But <laughs> popcorn in the movie theater, but you know there are a lot of lot of ingredients in there that that might be an issue. The oil, although much of the oil in this country might be certified, but what if all it takes is one time for the for them to have a you name the movie that was a popular movie that. Sold out the sold out the theater for four days in a row on a holiday weekend, and and they ran out of oil, so they're and they're not waiting for the delivery guy who's not coming for three more days. Right, they're going to go to the supermarket and get oil, and if it happens to be they got oil with uh, without it that's not certified or not or maybe even not kosher. Right, so um, we'll go back to a nursery rhyme. You know, all the king's horses and all the king's men won't be able to put my popcorn machine back together again. Mm-hmm. Right, it, it's uh, once it becomes not kosher one time, and you don't know that. Right, so you have a you have a challenge on your hand to figure out. Then then you have the butter, right? The butter that they put the in there, okay, right, for the popcorn. That so 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 there, there, a, lot there are a lot of challenges. Right, right, a lot of challenges that 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 are are some of them we have locally that that, but some of them uh, present themselves more uh, you know during the during the summer times. Wow. So if a person is in such a challenge, with understand that the rabbi told me before something that I wasn't even sure about is the fact that the OU has a hotline. Right. And they could call any time. Right. The, 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 the OU hotline is, you know, is generally from 9 to 5 on Monday to Thursday and 9 to 2.30 on, on Fridays. Right. You can call 212-613-8241. Mm-hmm. Right. And you'll get, you'll get a live person. Uh, I mean, the general person... Um, Big tzaddik who was very familiar with all, all the things. I'm going to keep his name out for the <laughs> moment. Um, but but also you can send an email to kosher Q, right? The word kosher with the letter Q at ou.org, and you'll get a response in a timely fashion. There's another rabbi who who sits and answers those questions on a regular basis, and we, we you know the OU is trying to service the consumer as much as they can. Obviously, you know before Pesach, the, the hotline extends its hours and. Uh, yeah. And expands its uh, its reach with uh, Klal Yisrael reaching out a lot, but the, you know th- that's something that people should be aware of that that the, the OU makes themselves available to the to the Amazing. tzibur. And right now, also a lot of people are going away. The kids are going to th- different camps. Uh, right. What should they be aware of in and such so, scenarios? So, so in the camps, we hope that you know that the hanhala of the camp is uh, is making sure that that all the food that they're serving is okay. But you know, even when we send our kids to sleepaway camps, right? There's that trip day. Man. Right, so they're going to go to to this amusement park, and right, so maybe by your local Six Flags, they have the the ice cream that's good. Maybe, but, but maybe, right, <laughs> right, but but if you go to the you know to Hershey Park, or to Dorney Park, or to one of these parks, that, or you know the uh, you know some some of the older groups, you know, go to Niagara Falls or to Boston or to other, you know, right, not not everything is uh, is the same as is the same as you're going to find in your local. Right? You, you know, we're, we're sitting here in Queens right now. Yeah. You know, you can walk Main Street and yeah. find seventy five stores within the ten team. block ten block radius. You're not finding that in Hershey or in any other place. Right? So people have to be aware. I, I told the story many years ago in camp. Um, the the rabbi who was running the kitchen in the camp was very careful. That the milk that they had in camp, even though the milk may may or may not need ashgacha, plain milk, you know, right? He m- made sure to get a different brand of milk that had a reputable certification because he knew that the, the certification for the milk that they were normally getting, ha- they sell sold certain candies at some of these uh, supermarkets near 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 the camp and some of the at some of the amusement parks. And if they said they're going to come and see, oh, oh, it's the same ashgacha that's on the milk in camp. I, this should, this must be great, right? So he, he wanted to make sure that the that the people were were not going to be nichshal, not going to make a mistake and 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 buy the wrong thing. So you know, so the the kids are going the kids our kids are going away and and we uh, you know we know that uh, 
uh, that the uh, non-kosher food has an effect on a person's neshama and it's, um, right, it's, right, it's, right, it's right, right, right. So, so, so we want we want to make sure that they know that the same level of care that we have throughout the year, we're also going to be able to transfer to the you know to the summer when we're sending our children away. One hundred percent. A lot of people uh, throughout the year they go out. Eating out is uh, is. Uh, no, uh, there, there are certain rabbis that speak at Chazak, Shalom Bais, and, right. and, and classes like that. And, and I, I remember one rabbi saying that you got to go out twice a week with your wife for Shalom Bais. Right. Right. Now, uh, Baruch Hashem, people are eating out, the restaurants are happening. Uh, what should one be aware of when going out to eat in a local restaurant or in a random restaurant? Right. So, so, so one, one of the things that, that, uh, that people have to be aware of, the OU is Ashgacha requires a mashgich to meet in all of our places. In all of our restaurants and meat, caterers, dairy, meat, meat, dairy, dairy, doesn't matter. Right. Wow. So, so, so there are a couple. There are a couple of reasons that that are that simple. Simple. Just like a mishgech to me these all right, the time. Right. From opening to closing. Right. That that one of the things is just the products that come in. Uh, in in my travels today, um, one one of the one of our rest one of our caterers got a delivery of spring roll. Which is something they they'll make a, an egg roll, like an egg egg roll, roll. a spring roll, but but it happened to be the, the company the company that they got from has ashgacha, but the one that they that they sent was had had dairy ingredients in it. It oh, wasn't wow. kosher. Right, so so who, who's checking that? Right, if you when you when you walk into your local supermarket and they're packing out potato chips, right, and you know this brand has seven flavors that are kosher, but three that are not kosher. Who's the person who's packing that out in your supermarket? Who's Checking that oh this is the kosher one or this is the non right right so so, so you know that that happens in a dairy restaurant or in a meat restaurant it doesn't it doesn't affect right then you have you have the concern of bishalakum food cooked by a non Jew that you know who's turning on the fires uh, of, of of what's going on so uh, mashgiach has to has to monitor that you know but mash, it's you far know, even more, even more so. right that's a bishul base you'll say right oh, it's, 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 it's a, that's an that's a big challenge to to oversee that by by a, by a restaurant. restaurant. But you know, you also have your vegetables, right? What vegetables are you using? Um, there, there's uh, you know the educational system by which consumers have been educated ha- has has grown by leaps and bounds. I mentioned the OU has a, their summer seminars, other Ashkachot do too, and the speaking and these type of topics that are discussed publicly help uh, raise raise the bar and raise the level. Of, of what goes on, but but the as people become more aware, right? So we have to be we have to be more careful. People have to and, be uh, right, observing right, Jews, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> have to observe what's going on, and right. So so so, so we have to be careful that the, that the, someone's taking care of the of the vegetables. We have this perception that everyone's using um, pre-checked vegetables. No, 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 right. All right. Maybe, maybe some are there. You know, listen. I, I just, uh, you know, we were we were certifying a certain restaurant for a number of summers, and they, for business reasons, decided. You know, there are many Hasidim up in the mountains. Also, they decided to to take a Hasidish Ashgacha. And for the last many years, we'd been had someone washing the romaine lettuce and there. They, this Hashgacha said, no, you can only use romaine lettuce that's pre-checked. We're not going to check. Okay. Okay, great. Is that, that's, that's considered a higher standard. Yeah, right, right. That's 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 you know taking taking some of the human element out of the, but you know that that's that's a choice that that a company made. But but the the fact that it's a that it's a um, for sure that someone's doing that is not necessarily always the case. True. Right. So yeah. So th- these are just some issues that that people have to ha- have to be aware of that when they're going out to eat. You know that the. Uh, you know the, the you know there's some there's some ashkachot that will put on sign and that, that we don't take a, a take responsibility for any of the beverages that are in the place. They'll certify the restaurant, but I've not never the beverages. Seen that. Interesting. Yeah, that, that, well, you'll see at some at weddings also of of some of the Hasidic ashkachos won't take responsibility for the beverages. Because it's, it's, it's complicated with the yeah, regards to right, right, right. alcohol right. or live death. Both. Or both. both. Yeah. Interesting. Both. So that, that 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 that's something, but but it, it's just a just a matter of you know. If something looks too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> right, that, that, that's that's your that that that's your number. You know, if you see you, you see Hashgacha and you see that the the certificate is expired, right? It's you know, now now it's expired. You know, we're in two, we're in twenty thousand twenty four. Right, two thousand two four. Right, if it says two thousand twenty one, you, you know you have a problem. <laughs> if, if, if it's a month, a few days. You know, no, if it's a month, a week, a month, even even a little more. You know, so some so what? So what just no, so many, right, 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 many many of the hashkachot are, feel that they're that they're serving the community, and as much as there is a a business element to it, right. 
if they started on, you know, when we're coming up to June 30th, so, you know, every, many, many places, you know, we update their Tuda twice a year. So June 30th is a big time when, when a number of the Tuda... So, you know, you come to July 4th and, and they, didn't, they didn't get, you know, so it could be the person who was doing the letters was away for July 4th weekend and didn't get it. But also, if, if you know, on July 1st, if we, we're not going to start putting out emails, this place is no longer under Rosh Gacha. That's not, you know, as much as a consumer would probably rather we do that just so they're not confused and... Right, we're we're not we're, we're here to serve this call you so right. not 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 so not not to not to start you know because because any anything that and anything that you write and that's something just people just need to be careful with when something happens or something goes on you have to be so careful one word that you say could destroy a person's parnasa forever 100%. and sometimes even when someone was there right and right uh, I, was, I remember growing up uh, to a story there was a there was a rav who was involved in being makariv people. And there was a certain person, he was Makariv, and well, one day, um, one Shabbos, they, they, this, uh, this person happened to see um, this rabbi driving a car on Shabbos, right? And they just cut off complete, didn't have anything to do with, with him for 20 years. One day they got a, they saw the they saw the not- notifications. Yeah, we get, unfortunately get bombarded with notifications when well, you know, someone passes away. All right, they get so many shiva notices and uh, etc. They saw the shiva. Oh, the person's funerals today. Okay, you know what? They, they uh, I still have a kara satov. I'm going to go to. I recognize the good that he did for me, even though I, I had a falling out. I'm going to go to the funeral. At the funeral, the daughter spoke about that Shabbos when she was when she hurt herself in Sakanas Nefesh. She was in danger in life. He drove me to the hospital, and then, right. So, so, so you know, so, sometimes you know, sometimes there, there's there's the you know uh, there are a number of books out there. The other side of the story, you know, you saw everything. You knew every every specific point. What happened? You missed that point. Hmm. All right. So, so, so you know, when 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 you're inclined to start quote unquote hacking. About something that happened, he said, "Just, just remember, you're dealing with a person's parnasa, a person's mm-hmm. life, and and you know, it's all it's all together. So that and that's that that that's something we have to be careful with. You know, it, it it's it, it's good, um, you know, stuff to talk about at the kiddush, right? We don't talk in shul, so it has to be a, mm-hmm. we talk at the kiddush, right? But but it's 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 not it's not you know." It's not so gishmak when when you're when you might be the recipient the, the next day of 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 this conversation. So it's when you hear something happen, verify, double verify. Right? If you didn't see that the hashgacha pulled it, the hashgacha, then maybe it's not. Maybe there's a, you know, there's other sides, there are other other things that went on. One hundred percent, Rabbi Shreyer, yeah. very very informative, enjoying every single moment. Um, we have a minhaga custom, which is a final message on Torah so, talks. So, so I think you know we're uh, we're in between uh, Parshat Balotzcha and Parshat Shlach, right? The, we were just talking about the the whole concept of lashon hara, right? The, from Miriam and Aaron to the Miraglim, right? Uh, you know, we'll, you put a plug to, to to our wives before, so I'll put a plug. You know, the the Kliyakar has a famous comment on the on the why it's Shlach Lecha Anashim. Right. right, right, right. So he, so he said that that was the first mistake. If you would have sent women, you wouldn't have had any problems. <laughs> right? They would have had. They would have said great about Eretz Yisrael, and we would have gone right, right into Eretz Yisrael. But, but, uh, but uh, now talking about talking about Lashon Hara, we've we've spent so much time through the years, the Chafetz Chaim Heritage Foundation and others, amazing, not the yeah. right amazing raising awareness of uh, of what's going on. Right, and you know, so, so so we, you know, we've always said that everyone's so careful what they put in their mouth. Uh, be careful what's coming out of their mouth. And that, now we've we've elevated ourselves. We're we're getting to the point where we're being more and more careful of what's coming out of our mouths. Now we have to go careful. back. We have to be extra care, Go back to being extra careful of what's going into our mouth. <laughs> Very nice, Rabbi Dov Schreier. Amazing chizuk inspiration. How important it is, uh, kashrut, uh, uh, keeping kosher year round. And uh, we appreciate your time and all that you do for Claudia said the Jewish people. Chazak Torah Talks, Tuesday nights, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, chazak.org, chazaq.org, slash live. And a special thank you to all of our podcast players and platforms with a shout-out to our friends at Torah Anytime. And a special shout-out to Daily Giving as well. A dollar a day goes a very far away. We encourage everyone to check that out. And uh, to all the amazing staff at Chazak, uh, Natan Behar behind the camera, and all the amazing volunteers and board members and, and donors, we're forever grateful. Baruch Hashem, great things are happening. Uh, right now, the summer is the busiest time of the year for the organization, placing kids from public schools into Yeshiva for the September new school year. If you know a family member, friend, neighbor, or a coworker, anybody they know needs help, make sure to reach out to Chazak, C H A Z A Q, at 718 285 9132. And once again, Tuesday nights, 8.30 p.m., Chazak Torah Talks. Really appreciate everyone's amazing feedback. Keep on sending it. And once again, thank you, Rabbi Shire.
for joining us. My pleasure. <clears throat> Bye.